Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So welcome to the Ultimate Candlestick Pattern Trading Course, right? In this course, right, you'll learn how to identify high probability trading setup so you can profit in bull and bear markets. Now, some of you might be thinking, right, I'm new to trading, right? Would this help me? I have no idea about candlestick patterns. I don't know technical analysis. Don't worry, right? Because in this course, right, I'll walk you through step by step from A to Z, right? on how to trade candlestick patterns, even if you have no trading experience. And by the end of this uh, session, right, I can assure you that you will be able to trade candlestick patterns like a pro. Sounds good? Then let's begin. So now the first thing, right, to get started is what is a candlestick pattern? Okay, so a candlestick pattern is essentially a method, right, of reading a price chart. It originated back in uh, Japan, right, that's the history. And the key component right, of a candlestick chart is that it shows you four things. It shows you the opening price, the price, the high of the session, the low of the session, and the closing price. Okay, so when I use the term session, right, it can mean different things, right? If you're looking at candlestick charts on a daily time frame, it means the high of the day. If you're looking at candlestick charts on the one hour time frame, it means the high of the one hour session. Okay, so it, it can mean uh, different things depending on the time frame you're looking at. We'll cover that uh, in more details later. So now, how do you read a candlestick pattern or how do you read a candlestick chart? So remember, there are only four things. The open, the high, the low, and the close. So looking at this, right, you can see that the candles are usually typically two colors, either, you know, green, red, or perhaps it can be black, white, right? Sometimes you can even, you know, uh, change the color if you want, but generally, the most common color is green and red. So when you see a green candlestick, pattern, right? It means that the price has closed higher for the session. So you can see that this is the opening price at this, uh, this line over here. This is the opening price. This is the closing price. And when you see this black shadow over here, we, we call this a wick, right? This is the upper wick. This is the highs of the session. And this over here is the lows of the session, all right? This, this, at this point over here. So likewise, right? On the other hand, the red color bar, the bearish bar, the open is at the opposite side. The open now is on top, right over here, the open. And the close is at the bottom. And the lows of the session is here, over here. And the highs of the session is here. So the main difference between a bearish bar and a bullish bar is that the open and close are at the opposite side. For a bullish bar, it means the price has closed higher for the session. The open is always below the close. For a bearish bar, it means that the price has closed lower for the session and the open has to be above the close. Okay, so now let's try to understand you know, these uh, candlestick patterns in more depth. So first thing, right, you'll notice that is that candlestick patterns, there are two main components to it, right? One is what we call the body. This portion here is the body, right? This green area. And this black shadow thing is what we call the wick, right? So the body pretty much tells you, right, who's in control. So in this case, you can see that the buyers, the opening price is over here and the buyers push price up all the way up higher and finally closing at this highs of the session. However, you can't neglect this uh, shadow as well because what it's telling you is that there is price rejection. There is, you know, rejection of higher prices because if you think about this, right, this was once the highs of the session. So what this tells you is that at one point in time, the sellers actually push the price from this highs down lower, right, until price closed over here. All right, until it closed over here. So if you think about this, right, this is actually a form of price rejection, right, rejection of higher prices. So there are two components to a candlestick uh, pattern, the body and the wick. The third thing that I want you to know is this, right, where did the, or rather, what is the size of the body relative to the wick? Because you can see over here again, you have just a wick, and the body, but this time around, the message is completely different, right? If you look at this candlestick pattern over here, it shows that, yes, the price did close higher. The price opened here at this level, and it closed over here, right? This is the close, this is the open. However, if you look at the wick, notice the price rejection, because at one point in time, right, the highs of the session is over here at this point. And the only way for the price to actually close at this level is that the price, right, has to come all the way down from the highs. And then finally closing at this uh, this level. So what does this tell you? It tells you that yes, right, the buyers did push the price up slightly higher for the session. 
but there was an immense amount of selling pressure, a strong price rejection, right? That actually pushed the price lower during the session. So you can see that over here, this isn't a very bullish pattern. In fact, it's quite bearish. as It shows you that the immense selling pressure by the sellers. Okay, so you, I also want you to pay attention to actually these three things. Number one is the body. Number two is the wick. And number three is the body relative to the wick, right? The size of the body relative to the wick. Usually, if the wick is much longer than the body, it's, it's a, a sign of price rejection. Okay, so this is uh, how you read candlestick patterns. Just three components. The body, the wick, and the body relative to the wick. So moving on, right, let's look at a, a few variations, right, to candlestick patterns. So the first one, I think, is something that you are probably, you know, familiar with. The price actually opened here. Open. Then it closed. This is the highs. This is the lows of the session. This is a close, right? I call it C. Then in terms of the meaning behind it, you can see you can see it's quite straightforward. The price opened near the lows. It tried to reach, come down lower, got rejected. Then it finally closed near the highs. At one point in time, it was actually at this level over here, meaning the buyers were at this level at one point in time and the sellers came in, pushed price slightly lower and finally closing near the highs. So it's a sign of strength. How about this candle? You can see that the price opened here and it closed over here. So when the market just opened, right, possibly what happened is that the price came down lower. The sellers were in control. Then the buyers took charge and pushed push price all the way back up higher, back towards these highs. And then finally, the sellers came back in and, and you know, the market cl closed at this price level. So generally, the meaning behind it is that there is, you know, indecision in the markets. Both buyers and sellers are present, right? And the market just inched slightly up higher. So if you ask me, generally, this is what we call an indecision pattern. And if you look at this last candlestick pattern, right, the price opened here, market came down all the way down lower, sellers are in control, then the buyers took charge and reversed back and finally closing near the highs. So the meaning of this pattern is rejection of lower prices. The buyers are clearly in control. Okay, moving on, right, just the opposite variation. This one, I think I don't think there's much to go through. Right? It's just the opposite to what we have just shared earlier. Okay, this is instead, uh, this is the uh, selling version of it. So now let's do a quick recap, shall we? A candlestick chart, right, shows you who's in control, right? Remember, I said pay attention to the body, the wick, and the body relative to the wick. That is important as well, right? Because if you can have a, a bullish close, but then if your wick is much longer than the body, right, it's still a sign of price rejection, okay? So moving on, candlesticks on different time frames. So earlier, right, if you recall, I said that candlestick chart can appear on different time frames daily one hour whatsoever and if you look at this right this is a candlestick chart on the 60 minutes time frame right which is the one hour so you can see that this means that every hour one of this bar will be painted right every hour this bar will be painted one hour this bar is painted one hour later this bar is painted one hour later this bar is painted so a bar is printed on the screen every one hour and if you look at this one over here this is the daily time frame Okay, see this over here, one, sorry, 1D, right, means daily, right? This means that every single bar is printed after a day. Okay, so Monday, there'll be a bar, Tuesday, there is one bar, Wednesday, there is one bar, and etc. So this is how candlestick patterns, right, can form on the different time frames. So now, I want to walk you through something what we call combining candlestick patterns, because candlestick patterns they are essentially just showing you the price of the different sessions. And if you think about this, right, this can be combined, right? For example, let me share with you, right? If you look at this, right, just imagine that let's say this is a one hour candle, right? The green one is one hour. Red one is one hour. So now when you combine these two candlestick pattern, this one over here, what time frame is this candle going to be? Well, one hour plus one hour, this will be a two hour candle. All right, and how did this two-hour candle come about? Very simple, right? A two-hour candle simply means, right, it identifies what's the high over the last two hours, what is the low over the last two hours, the opening price of the uh, first hour, and the closing price, right, at the uh, second hour. Simple. So if you look at this, right, this is essentially the open. This is the close. This is the highs. Let's call it H. And this is the lows. Right, let's call it L. 
So you can see that where did we get the open from? We get the open from the first candle because this is the first candle, the first hour of the two hours. Sorry, this is the open. So this is why we have the open over here. Now, where is the high? The high is simply the highest point between these two candles. So in this case, the highs between these two candles is pretty much the same. So this is the highs. What about the lows? The lows is essentially the lowest point between these two candles, between these two one hour candles. And the lower, the low is actually this over here, which got this, this. And where is the close? Well, the close is essentially the close of the second candle, which is this one over here. This candle close at this price level. And that's why you got this close. So when you combine these two candles, this one plus this one, you're going to get this uh, bearish looking price rejection on your chart. Does it make sense? Okay, let's look at some real examples. So if you look at this chart, right, this is the chart of the one hour time frame. Okay, just pay attention. I want you to pay attention to these two areas, right? These two candles, this one, this one, and this one, this one. Briefly visualize in your head, right, that, hey, let's say I'm going to move to a two hour time frame right now. How will this patterns change? So let me give you five seconds to kind of, you know, work on your visualization. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so let's have a look. So if you saw those two patterns earlier, it pretty much is reflected like this on the two hour time frame. Can you see what happened? The two one hour candles are simply combined to form the pattern that you're seeing right now. Okay, let me just go back a little bit so you can see, right? This one over here, this one plus this one, and this one plus this one. So what happens is you get this candlestick pattern over here and this candlestick pattern over here. All right, so let's just to walk you through, why is this green color? Because the second candle did close higher above the first. So if you look at it, this second candle over here, it did close higher above this one over here. So that's why you got a, a bullish, uh, bullish close, okay? And similar for this, right? This candle, it closed, right? But it didn't exceed the open of this candle. So that's why it's still red on the two-hour time frame, as you can see over here and over here. Okay, so by now, I hope you kind of understand how candlestick patterns can be combined. So this is very useful, right? When you're looking at a price chart, let's say the one-hour time frame, and you can't, you can't make sense out of it, right? So if you want to see uh, uh, clearly, what you can do is go on to a two-hour time frame and things might be different, right? You might get a clearer view of what's happening. Similarly, if you're on a four-hour time frame, you can't make sense out of it. Go up to the eight-hour time frame and things might be clearer for you. Okay, so this is the uh, so-called usefulness, right, of combining candlestick patterns and kind of, you know, just understanding what's going on on the uh, big picture. So now, how not to trade candlestick patterns, right? So now, now you know how to read candlestick patterns, you even know how to combine them. How do you not trade candlestick patterns? Because this is a mistake, right, that I see many new traders make. Because, you know, as I've said, right, earlier, you recall that I say, if the candle is green, it means bullish. If the candle is red, it means bearish, right? The price is close, lower. So what traders will do is that they will look at a chart and they find a series of green candles and they go long. For example, they see over here, wow, man, the candle is green over here, bullish, bullish. Let me buy, right? It's so bullish. They go long and bam, market reverse. Similarly, right, they look at the chart. Oh, it's so bearish, right? Red candle, red candle. Rainer says, it's, you know, uh, selling, uh, sellers are in control. I should go long. Bam, market reverse. Right? Or if they look at, you know, this green candle, oh, you know, rejection of, oh, rejection of lower prices, this candle, right? Let me go long. Bam, market reverse. What's going on? Right? Why, why is that so? So I'll explain why shortly, but first, right? How, the message I'm trying to bring over here is that you don't want to trade candlestick patterns in isolation. What is isolation? It means, right, you don't want to trade candlestick patterns by in itself just because the candlestick is green, it doesn't mean you go long. Just because it's red doesn't mean you go short. That's what I mean by isolation. So don't trade candlestick patterns in this manner. Okay, so just a quick recap, right? Candlestick charts, it can be combined, right? As I've shared with you earlier. And also, you don't want to trade candlestick patterns in isolation. So now you might be wondering, okay, Rainer, so how should I trade candlestick patterns, right? So let's talk about that. So how should you trade candlestick patterns? I would like to introduce to you something, what I call the T framework, the T, T framework, all right? So what is T? T stands for trend, all right? A is area of value, and E stands for entry trigger, okay? So when you want to trade candlestick patterns, right? Remember these three things, the trend, the area of value, and the entry trigger. 
So now, before I can, you know, dive into this framework and this uh, methodology, right, I need to explain to you what is entry trigger, okay? So to do so, right, I would say candlestick patterns are, are very useful and powerful uh, entry trigger into a trade. So before we can go into this framework, right, let me share with you, right, five powerful, five powerful candlestick patterns, right, that can serve as an entry trigger. And once we've learned that, right, we can look at this framework right, and see how you can actually find high probability trading setups in the market, okay? So moving on, the first candlestick pattern that I want you to know is the engulfing pattern. So the engulfing pattern, right, this is the uh, so-called the uh, theory behind it, right? So you can see that this green candle over here is what we call the bullish engulfing pattern. Why is that? Because if you look at it, right, the body of the green candle, which is the uh, from here in the open and the close, it has engulfed the body of the previous candle. So this is the previous candle, let's call it number one, and this number two, right? You can see that the engulfing candle, bullish engulfing candle, has actually covered the entire body of the first candle. So this is why we call it the bullish engulfing pattern, because the meaning behind it is that if you look at the uh, charts, right, first candle, sellers are in control. They open over here and they close near the lows. On the second candle, the buyers are somehow on steroids, like bum, right, they're on steroids, right, they open near the lows and they finally push price up all the way up near the highs over here. They are freaking on steroids. Right, this is the open and this is the close. So this is a sign of strength, right? As it shows you that the buyers have reversed all the selling pressure and more. So this is why uh, it's called a bullish engulfing pattern, right? Firstly, it engulfed the body of the previous candle and it's a sign of strength as the buyers have pushed price higher and even closing above the highs of the previous candle. The other pattern is what we call the bearish engulfing pattern. It's just the opposite, right? You can see that the first candle over here is bullish. Buyers are in control, open here and closing near the highs. But the next candle, sellers took charge and smashed the price lower, right? They opened near the highs as well, but it, they took charge and finally pushed price lower and closing near the lows over here. So this is a bearish engulfing pattern telling you that, you know, sellers are in control. Okay, so this is the first pattern that I want to share with you, the engulfing pattern. And it's very useful to identify, you know, uh, market reversals. The next one, hammer and shooting star. Ding! All right, so let's have a look at the hammer. So the hammer is something that you might be familiar with because you, you saw earlier, right, the earlier examples. So the hammer is a bullish reversal because it's actually showing you price rejection in the market. In fact, it's rejection of lower prices. If you look at this, right, the price open here. And at one point in time, right, the sellers were actually in control, pushing price lower near the lows of this session, near the lows of this session. And then the buyers came in, took charge, hey, hey, this is enough, man, I'm coming in, right? They pushed price all the way up higher and finally closing near the highs, right? So this is a sign of strength, right? Rejection of lower prices. So this is what a hammer means. On the other hand, right, the shooting star is just the opposite, right? It's showing you rejection of higher prices. If you look at this, right, the price open here, buyers took charge, pushed the price up higher. But then, hey, you know, sellers suddenly came in and pushed the price down. Maybe, you know, they think that the price is too high. You know, it can't go any higher. They sell, they short the market, and the market collapsed lower, finally closing near the lows. So this is a rejection of higher prices, right? These two patterns, again, are, are used, right, to help you identify market reversals. Dragonfly and the Gravestone Doji, right? It sounds a handful, but really, the pattern is very similar to the uh, Hammer and Shooting Star. The only difference, right, is that now this doji, doji simply means, right, uh, indecision in the markets, but for dragonfly and gravestone doji, it's a sign of price rejection because if you look at it, right, it's actually very similar to the hammer and shooting star that you've seen earlier, right? Let me just go back a little bit. Hammer, shooting star. Dragonfly doji, gravestone doji. So now let me ask you, what is the difference between the hammer and shooting star and the dragonfly and gravestone doji? If you think about this, right, the only difference is the doji doesn't have a body. There is no body, right? What it just shows you is just the price rejection. So this component over here is the rejection of lower prices. This component over here is the rejection of higher prices. So if you think about this, right, uh, even though the price has opened and closed at the same level, it doesn't mean that the market is undecided because the market has actually tilted its hand, right? Because at one point, the sellers were in control, pushing price down lower, and then the buyers came in, right, and took charge and finally pushed up all the way up higher and closing near where it opened, exact level. So this is a sign of strength, rejection of higher 
rejection of lower prices. And this one is just the opposite, right? Price open at this level, buyers took charge, pushed the price up higher, and then sellers smashed the price down lower, closing at the same level. Okay, so this is a rejection of lower prices, rejection of higher prices. Moving on, right? Morning and evening star. Ding, 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 right? Star, let's look at the star. So this is a morning star. So you can see that this is a somewhat similar to the engulfing pattern, but with a slight variation to it. First candle, sellers are in control. Open over here and closing near the lows. Second candle, which is this doji looking candle, is indecision, right? Because the market opened and closed at the same level. Because if you if you read this uh, candlestick pattern, what it's telling you that is the open and the close are at the same level. Market, at one point in time, right, this was the highs of the session. And at one point in time, this is the lows of the session. So eventually, right, the highs and lows, the market actually, you know, went back to, to where it opened, right? So it's telling you that there is somewhat indecision, indecision in the markets. And then finally, right, the third candle, price open and push up all the way up higher and finally closing near the highs. So if you look at the price action of this candlestick pattern, right, if you think about this, it's like first candle, sellers in, are in control, push the price lower. Second candle, buyers and sellers, they are in, in equilibrium, cannot decide you know, who gets the uh, advantage. So they pretty much close at the same level. Third candle, buyers stepped in, right, and say, hey, you know, I'm in charge. Boom, price close near the highs. So that's the meaning behind the uh, morning star. It's a bullish reversal pattern. And the evening star is just the opposite, right? First candle, buyers are in control, closing near the highs. Second candle, indecision, right? Can't decide you know, whether, you know, go up or go down. So that's why they close at the same level where they open on this uh, this candle over here. The open and close is at the same level. And third candle, morning star, right? Sorry, uh, bears come in and push price lower, closing near the lows. So this is what we call an evening star, a bearish reversal pattern. And finally, tweezer top and bottom, right? So a tweezer top, right, is uh, this one over here. Okay, so this is actually a tweezer bottom. So let's talk about tweezer bottom first. Tweezer bottom basically, right, it's a, it's a, I would say it's a quite a powerful pattern because it's actually showing you, right, rejection of lower prices two times, right? First rejection, second rejection, right? So if you look at the price action again, price open over here. At one point in time, right, the sellers came down all the way down lower, right, and buyers stepped in, pushed price higher and closing here. Then the next candle, the price opened at this level, sellers tried to push price lower once again, right, near the lows where it did previously over here couldn't exceed the lows, just couldn't push price lower. Then the buyer stepped in and finally closing at the highs. So this is a sign of strength, right? Rejection of lower prices. In fact, you rejected the prices twice, right? So this is a, quite a strong pattern, right? It shows you uh, two times the price rejection. And on the other hand, right? This is a tweezer top, right? You can see that over here, price opened over here and closed here. At one point in time, it was at the highs of this session before the sellers did push price quite a bit finally closing near this middle of the range of the candle. Then the next candle, the price opened here and the buyers quickly took charge. Got rejected at the same level or around the same level again before the sellers come in, push the price lower and finally closing near the low. So again, two times the price rejection, rejection of higher prices. So this is a bearish uh, reversal pattern. So now that you have understand, right, the five powerful candlestick patterns, how does this fit? into the T framework, right? Remember the T, right? Trend, area of value, and the entry trigger. So now we have already settled the entry trigger portion because the reversal patterns that you have seen earlier, those are entry triggers that you can use to enter the trade. But before you, you know, you trade it, right? Remember we said, right? Don't trade it in isolation. Right? This means that we have to use other factors, right? Other market conditions, right? To look for before we wait for our entry trigger. And the conditions that we look for is the T framework, the trend and area of value. And finally, the entry trigger. So firstly, right, the trend. So what we are looking for is that if the price is above the 200 MA, we will have a long bias. This means that we want to be a buyer in this market condition. If the price is below the 200 MA, then we will have a short bias. This means that we will only be looking to short, right? So understand that when I define the trend, right, it doesn't mean that just because the price is above the 200 period moving average, it doesn't mean you go long immediately. No, 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 right? This is just to give you a bias, a permission that, hey, you know, now it's time to be buying. Now it's time to be looking for buying opportunities, okay? So now that we have defined the trend, the second thing we want to look for is area of value, right? You want to, you want to trade from an area of value. When you go to a supermarket, you don't be buying apples, right, when you're selling three apples for $30. You're 
you want to be buying apples at three for a dollar, three for two dollars, right? You're getting value out of it. And it's the same for trading, right? When you want to buy, trade from an area of value. So an area of value could be stuff like support and resistance, moving average, trend line, channels, etc., etc. So I'm just going to give you a few examples over here, area of value. And the third thing is where we look for the entry trigger to enter the trade. Like for example, the candlestick patterns you've seen earlier, engulfing pattern, tweezer tops and bottoms, you know, and etc. Okay, so now using this framework, we can then formulate trading strategies, right, to, to profit in bull and bear markets. So remember the first thing we are looking for, the trend, right? If it's in an uptrend, we will only look to buy and we'll buy at either area of support, moving average or upward trend line. And then we'll look for an entry trigger, right? The entry trigger will be a bullish reversal pattern, like a, a hammer, a bullish engulfing pattern, right? A, a dragonfly doji and etc. Does it make sense? Okay, so now let's have a look at a few examples to kind of, you know, bring in this concept together, bring all these concepts together. Example one. So you can see over here, right? I don't have the 200 MA on the chart, right? But needless to say, the trend is down, right? Because you can see that the market is moving from up to down. So it's a downtrend. Then we saw that, you know, the price came into this area of resistance, right? Where the price got rejected once, twice, and a third time. And the third time over here, you got this uh, entry trigger. So number one, you look, right? You have the trend. What is the trend? The trend is down. Number two, do you have the area of value? Yes, you do, right? This is the area of value, right? At resistance, right? And number three, do you have your entry trigger? Let's call it E, entry trigger. Yes, you do have, right? This is a shooting star, rejection of higher prices. So can you see that now, you're not trading candlestick patterns in isolation. Now you're trading candlestick patterns in the context of the market, meaning you're trading candlestick patterns, right? Based on, you know, market structure based on the trend this actually increased the probability of your trade working out so you can see that over here right a uh, shooting star occurred at resistance in a downtrend okay and the market did uh, continue to slide lower so one thing to point out is that the examples i showed you right are all pretty much winning trades but in reality right you won't get all winning trades you will probably get you know a 50 percent winners 50 percent losers again the reason why I share winning trades is because it's easier to illustrate the concept. But again, those charts or rather the charts you're seeing right now, these are cherry pick, I admit, right? To illustrate the point I'm trying to make across. But in the real world of trading, right? You won't have 100% winners. Somewhere along 50%, 55% winners. So this is something that you must uh, kind of accept and embrace. Okay, so this is the first example. Second example, right? What is the trend? Number one, what is the trend? Trend is well down, right? Downtrend, right? You can see that the price is coming down lower. Number two, where is the area of value? This time around, the area of value is a moving average. This is the 50 period moving average, right? It's acting as a dynamic resistance. Number three, what is your entry trigger? This time around, we have this uh, bearish engulfing pattern, right? Notice this over here. Market close higher, second candle smash lower closing near the low. So this is what we call a bearish engulfing pattern, right? So we have three things. Number one, trend area of value and entry trigger and we can go short now having our stops above this high somewhere here right and the market uh to see if the market can continue lower so now you can see that hey you know we're all trading with something that uh that kind of makes sense right based on what the market is telling you and not just trading these patterns blindly in isolation example three all right look at this right ask yourself again what is the trend number one what is the trend well uptrend right series of higher highs and higher lows if you can't see this, right, you just pull out your 200 MA, right? And chances are this one, the price will be above the 200 MA. So anyway, the trend is up. Second thing, area of value. Do we have an area of value to trade from? Well, seems like it, right? Because the price has been respecting the 50 MA here, 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 and here. Okay, so number three, entry trigger. Do we have an entry trigger? Well, seems like it, right? We have a bullish engulfing pattern over here. A sign of reversal. Rejection of, rejection of lower prices, right? Price close higher, engulfing the first candle. Here as well, price open and then close higher above the first candle, another bullish engulfing pattern. So this is a bullish reversal pattern that you can go long, right? Another bullish reversal pattern that you can go long. And again, we're not going long just because we see a bullish reversal pattern. We go long because it's in an uptrend from an area of value, right? Let's have a look at another example. This time around, right? What is the trend? Again, what is the trend? One look, it's an uptrend. Number two, area of value. Where is it, right? If you look at the area of value, we have this actually, this trend line support. So this time around, it's not, uh, it's not a moving average or support, right? It's a trend line, upward trend line. So you can see that over here, in fact, if you look closely, 
This over here, right, you can actually plot a level over here. It's what we call a previous support that acts as resistance. This one. And on top of it, you have the confluence of a trend line. So your area of value now is uh, there are two things, right? Time, just call it times two. One is the trend line, upward trend line support. And the other one is the uh, previous resistance acting as support, right? So this is a strong area of value. The third thing, what do we have? Bullish engulfing pattern, right? We have this, right? So this is your entry trigger. Again, the T framework is met, right? Uptrend area of value, entry trigger, right? This is bullish engulfing. It's a bullish reversal pattern. Okay, another example, right? I really want to, to hammer in this concept, right? So once you can apply it, right? I would say that, you know, you can start finding, right? Much higher probability trading setups instead of, you know, just blindly trading these patterns. So again, number one, what is the trend? Well, downtrend, right? Number two, area of value. What is the area of value? This one over here, right? Resistance, previous support. Acting as resistance, resistance. Okay, number three. What is the entry trigger? I think we got something called the tweezer top, right? As you can see that the price rejected the highs over here one time. Then it rejected here a second time, right? And finally closing near the low. So this is a tweezer top bearish reversal pattern. Traders can look to go short. And uh, stop loss, right? I typically set it a distance away from the highs. I don't want to set it immediately directly above the highs because sometimes the market can just spike up higher and then reverse lower. Right, so usually I give it some buffer, put it somewhere here, right? Uh, if you notice, I have not talked about target profits yet because this entire course is about candlestick patterns. I don't want to go into trade management and target profits. If not, you'll run, right, for a few hours, right? But generally, right, if you are a swing trader, what you can do is to capture a swing, look to take profits, right, before the, uh, set, before the buying pressure comes in. So now you are looking to short. You want to take profits, right, before where buyers would step in and push price higher. So if you look at it, right, where will buyers come in? Right, buyers, chances are they will come in right at this area of support. So you might want to take profits right before this area of support. Okay, so say your stop loss is here, your entry is somewhere here, right? And your target right could be somewhere here before the area of support. So TP, E is for entry, and S is for stop loss, right? Stop loss, entry, target profit. So this is something like, you know, how you can go about trading this particular market. Right, so this is for swing trading. For position trading, what you can do is just trail your stop loss, right? You can use a moving average, like a 20 period moving average to trail your stop loss. If the price closes above the 20 MA, you exit the trade. Or in this case, right, if the price breaks and close above the previous candle high, you exit the trade as well. So in this case, right, the candle did, this candle over here, break and close above this previous candle high. So you exit somewhere here. So depending whether you're going to capture a swing or ride a trend, your trade management will differ accordingly. Okay, so, but it's a, a video for another time, but just to give you a brief introduction into, you know, trade management and exits. Example six, right? Let's have a look again, right? So, again, the Tay framework, number one, what is the trend? Tell me, right? The trend is down. Number two, do we have an area of value where we can trade from, right? Seems like the market is respecting this uh, 50 MA, all right? And then, third thing, do we have a valid entry trigger to trade from? Oh, yes, we have an evening star, right? Price close higher. Indecision candle and then smash lower reversing near the lows. So now we have the trend, downtrend, area of value, 50 MA. And entry trigger is this uh, evening star bearish reversal pattern. Okay. One final example to really hammer home, right? Bam, 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 bam. The concepts that you have learned today. Number one, what is the trend? Trend is downtrend. Okay. Number two, are we trading from an area of value? Yes, we are. Previous support. Act as resistance, okay. Number three, do we have a valid entry trigger to go short? Hey, what is this? This looks like an evening star, all right? So evening star, right? Uh, market close higher, second candle somewhat of an indecision candle, and then third candle, market close lower. All right, so yes, we have all these three criteria are met. So one thing to point out, right, is that earlier, you've seen that the, I've shared with you the different reversal candlestick patterns, and if you notice, right, the evening star looks slightly different from what I shared earlier. What I shared earlier, if you recall, the middle candle shows a doji where the price open and close at the same level, right? Whereas this one over here, there's actually a slight uh, body where the price did close higher slightly. And this is important because what I shared with you earlier, the so-called textbook patterns, right? There are always variations to it in the live market. So this is why it's so important to understand the candlestick patterns, not by memorizing patterns, right? But understanding, right? what each candle mean by looking at the wick, the body, 
and where did the body close relative to the wick? So this is why I keep hammering that point earlier, the, the three point, the body, the wick, and where did price close, right? For the body relative to the wick. Okay, so because in the real world of trading, you won't get these textbook examples, right? You won't get, you know, the open and close at the exact same price level. Sometimes it's going to be a slightly higher open. Sometimes it's going to be a slightly lower close and stuff like that. And you got to understand, right, the nuances and the variations that can come with it, right? Same for the, you know, tweezer tops and bottoms. If you see earlier the tweezer tops, right, the textbook example I shared, the highs, right, were at the, at the exact same level. But for this example, this one, the second candle, the highs actually exceeded the first candle. Again, there are always variations to it. So if you're the type of trader that, you know, die, die, you know, memorize the patterns, then you're going to have a really hard time because the market will not give you the exact textbook setup. It always comes, you know, variations, slight nuances and changes along. So you have to be prepared and, you know, uh, really know how to read candlestick patterns. So that's why we spend some time, right, uh, talking about reading candlestick patterns in the earlier part of the video. Okay? So with that said, uh, let's see. Okay, we've covered, covered this. All right, let's do a quick recap, shall we? What have you learned? So far, we have spoken about the Tay framework, right, the trend area of value and entry trigger, right? If you look for these three things, right, you can find high probability trading setups in bull markets and bear markets. Then we spoke about the candlestick patterns that you might want to pay attention to, the engulfing pattern, the hammer, shooting star, doji, tweezer, tops and bottoms, and morning and evening star. Okay, so, so now, right, that's pretty much what we have covered. So, so give me a moment, let me check... Uh, so, yep, that's a, a recap. And really, if you, if you want to learn more, okay, if you want to learn more about what I do, what I recommend is, you know, you can go down to my website, tradingwithrainer.com. Okay, if you can't find it, this is it, right? You can go down to my website, tradingwithrainer.com. Over here, the link, right? And if you want to learn more about the strategies and techniques that I use to trade the markets, go and download these two free trading guides. Okay, the link I'll just... So over here, right, just go down to my website, click this blue button. This one will share with you on techniques on how to write massive trends in the market. Remember, we didn't have time to talk about, you know, trailing stop loss and exit. So this book over here will talk about how you can go about writing trends in the market. For price action trading, right, the ultimate guide to price action trading, this one will share with you on how you can better read the markets and better time your entries and exits. Pretty much similar to what you have learned today, but in a more in-depth manner. So go to my website, download these two trading guides, click this blue button, and I'll send it to your email address for free. Okay, so with that said, I've come to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you really do, please, right, hit the like button, smash it, bam, 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 right, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll always be updated whenever I publish content like this. And finally, any questions or feedback, let me know below and I'll do my best to help. So with that said, right, I hope you got value out of this presentation. I wish you good luck and good trading and I'll talk to you soon.